listening to The Upland Rookie, a podcast presented by Upland Brits. Hey, what's up, rookies? How are you doing today? Uh, I am your host, Will Larson, and as always, this is presented by Upland Brits. Well, today I have a special episode for you. I am taking a deeper dive into Upland hunting boots. Yes, I have rocked a few pairs of boots. I'm going to give you my my thoughts, uh, my review or overview of some of the boots that I'm rocking or I've tried, some likes, dislikes. Maybe you're in the market for a new pair of boots for this coming season. You're going to want to stay tuned to this episode. As always, these gear review podcasts are not sponsored. I repeat, not sponsored. <laughs> Enjoy, everyone. If you want to get everything your dog's got, then you need nutrition that holds nothing back. To unleash your dog's maximum potential, check out the new Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup at yukonubasportingdog.com. I also want to highlight a new relationship I just formed with Onyx Hunt. That's right, Onyx Hunt. Guys, this is the most comprehensive digital mapping system out there. It's an app. They have a, uh, a web app version as well. Um, guys, I spend so much time pouring through Onyx Maps, uh, checking out locations in Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, Kansas, you name it, every state they have. Um, guys, you're going to save 20% if you use my promo code with uh, your Onyx Hunt subscription. That's T-U-R, the Upland Rookie, 20. So T-U-R, 20. That's going to save you 20% off your subscription to Onyx. Um, I'm using this not just in season, but I'm using this year round. Um, I used to just do kind of a month to month membership. And then a couple years ago, I switched to just the year round uh, annual membership. And guys, I am dropping pins daily. <laughs> I'm, you know, marking new locations I want to check out or drive by or get some more eyes on. But um, they have some amazing features. They just launched a new um, 3D uh, mapping map layer feature um, that is pretty incredible. I just checked this out on my computer the other day, and I'm scouting some areas in Montana, and I switched to that 3D mode, and it is lights out. So game changer right here. On X Hunt, T U R 20. It's going to save you 20% off your subscription. And lastly, thank you to Cable Gangs. Uh, get your orders in to Brennan. Guys, this is a Cable Gang system, uh, stakeout system for your dogs. Uh, whether you are running trials, um, doing yard work, um, whatever you have a use for, uh, I'm putting my two dogs out on the cable gangs almost every day. Um, I'm doing some yard work. So I'm, I got one on the cable gang. I'm working one, then I switch them out. So really cool system, very durable hit up Brennan, mention the podcast, and you will get a choice, uh, of one of two items for free, either a tether or a 24 inch drop. You just mention the Upland rookie podcast to Brennan when you order and you get your choice of a free item. So um, hit them up, Facebook or Instagram, Cable Gangs, G-A-N-G-Z. Thank you, Brennan. All right, so here we go. We're going to dive into a Upland boot review. Now, I'm going to review four different boots. Um, these are all ones that I have personally tried, put um, one or more seasons on. And to be honest, the boots that I'm going to review are all not, they're not sp all specifically for upland hunting. You'll, you'll kind of catch the theme of that. I'll share what I use, what I like, what I don't like, and some different applications I've used these boots in. Um, you know, this season is fast approaching. We're in uh, July right now of 2021 and the season's coming fast. And uh, one thing with boots I know is most of them take a little bit of a, a break in period, um, or at least most of them do. So, you know, if you're looking at boots, I would start looking at something soon uh, and then take it on some hikes. 
take you on some trails, go go walk with your family, go to the park. Um, get those boots broken in because there is nothing worse uh, than going out, you know, taking a vacation day, heading out on a weekend. You're so excited for this hunt and you're a couple miles in to walking and your feet are killing you. <laughs> I've, I've had it happen. A couple of these boots, um, or one pair in particular that I'll talk about, um, took some time to break in and really just bug the heck out of me. Um, so, so take some time, get these before <laughs> your hunting trip, um, break them in, wear them around the house, whatever it might be. Um, it's going to save you in, in the long run. It's going to save some some feet ache, <laughs> if you will. But um, so just just a quick note there on uh, get your boots soon. Um, and again, I just want to mention th- this is not sponsored. These are all boots that I've paid for over the last few years um, that I have tried. There's a certain boot I am not going to review. I'm not even going to talk about really, except right now. It is a LL Bean. It's like a six inch tall boot. Um, it's, it's a slip on boot. It's Oh, okay. I'm going to throw it in there <laughs> as a review contender. Cause it, I actually, it's actually my oldest boot. Um, I got it when I was hunting back in Illinois with my dad on a, on a preserve. Um, and then I took it waterfowl hunting. I, I did all sorts of things. I actually deer hunted in it too. <laughs> it's a leather boot. I don't think you're supposed to deer hunt in a leather boot, but I did. So this LL Bean, I'll just start things off. It is about six inch tall boot. I don't even know if they make it anymore. It, it is beat to heck. Um, I've, I've put some miles on it. Um, the, the use that this LL Bean boot gets right now is mostly shoveling snow. (laughs) It's actually a great snow shovel boot. It slips on really easy. Um, and so when I need to, you know, shovel the driveway in the winter, I slip that thing on. It has this weird inside the ankle zip so it's like this little quarter zip thing. So you once you slide your foot in, then you zip the boot up on the inside of each ankle. Kind of weird. I don't love it. Um, I've pinched myself actually before in it, if you can believe that. Um, so kind of a, a real pain, but um, overall, really nice boot. I do not know the model name of it because it is so old, but shout out to the LL Bean leather boot. I love it. No laces to worry about, which is kind of nice sometimes. Okay, I'm going to dive into my first boot. I have all these here in front of me. I will put a picture up on uh, my Instagram when this episode releases, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I am first holding the Irish Setter Wing Shooter. That is probably a a very popular boot that a lot of people are running or have run for years. Um, So I'm looking at this boot right now. It smells really nice still. I actually put, um, I think it's like mink oil on them last season. I think towards the end of last season. So they smell really good right now. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of weird, but... We all do it. Don't act like you don't. (laughs) So, um, okay, a couple things about this boot. Um, This is the tall version. I think this is like the 10 inch version. Um, So it's tall. Um, Okay, so I'm a a 14, just so we understand that. Uh, I'm a size 14 in in all my shoes. This is a 14 as well. And it, to me, it runs a little big. I actually get some some wiggle in there that when I first started wearing it, I got some like little hot spots on my feet. Um, Wasn't a huge difference huge deal, but, um, it still even feels like, uh, it's a little bit too big almost. So size 14, I ordered true to size, but, um, I, so I like to wear a thicker sock with this. So it's kind of annoying that I have to remember if I'm going to wear these, I just need to grab a thicker sock for that day. So a little quirk there, again, it might just be my feet or, or just the sizing of these, but, um, they are 400 gram thinsulate. Um, so they are a very, very warm boot that I will give it that. Um, this is not something I'm <laughs> definitely not going to rock in September. Um, I don't even know. It, it would have to depend on the weather. Um, if I would even rock this in October, if I'm hunting, uh, maybe Nebraska or, or South Dakota or something like that. So very weather dependent. I usually throw them in the truck whenever I go still, just to just to have them so they're i think they're very comfy um of a boot i like i actually really like the tall ankle support walking through a cornfield a wheat field whatever it might be i do like that really high ankle support and i i cinch it down really really tight uh, around my ankle so i just i don't know i i kind of like that feeling so kind of feels it's comfortable. I really enjoy it. Um, I have had to replace the laces twice on these boots. So I've had these for four seasons. Actually, I got these when I picked up Gage, my first bird dog. 
So four seasons in these. I didn't wear them a ton last year, but I've had to replace the laces twice actually. So I keep going back to uh, the Red Wing store because Red Wing owns Irish Setter and they keep giving me free laces, which is awesome. But again, it's kind of annoying. I have to, their laces are just not very strong. So that's just kind of a, a weird quirk. Um, okay, my biggest complaint about these are is the traction actually. Um, if you are in any kind of mud, that's a little slick. If you're in any kind of snow, I hate these things. I'm not going to lie. Um, really comfortable and stuff still, like I, I mentioned. But traction-wise, there's just not a lot of traction. So if I'm looking at the bottom of them, they have um, in the center of uh, kind of where the, bottom, where the ball of your foot is, there's a, a darker brown uh, pattern. That part's pretty grippy. But around that, there's this lighter color, I guess the midsole you call it, and it is just not. D does not provide you good traction. Um, so I actually really, really get annoyed by that. Um, again, if you're hunting late season uh, roosters or, or whatever it might be, uh, I've, I've worn these a bunch and uh, there's times I'll slip and I'll catch myself or uh, I think I've fallen on my butt one time, but just pretty annoying that they don't have the best traction. I don't know if that's your experience as well, if you have these, but that's just kind of my, my biggest pet peeve um, with these boots. And the other thing would be the sizing. So those are the Irish Setter, uh, again, made by Red Wing, uh, Wing Shooters. This is the tall boot. Um, again, smells really nice. So that is a huge, <laughs> huge selling point. I'm just kidding. All right, I'm moving on to another boot I've wore quite a bit. Um, this, this one has definitely seen some love. This is another, actually, Red Wing Irish Setter. This is the Elk Tracker has the scent beam in it or scent ban so the pheasant won't hear me coming or the chucker won't hear me coming uh just kidding <laughs> but um so elk tracker kind of says it in the name this is typically made as a, an elk hunting boot i think more of an early season boot that is waterproof which is pretty nice um but it's really not uh, i think it originally had like some coating on there to prevent water but my sharp tail hunt in september uh last year i absolutely soaked these things um, just from like the dew on the grass in the morning. I, I did a big, probably five, probably five mile walk that morning. It just rained the night before and my feet were freaking soaked. Um, a little bit of that was from my pant getting into my sock and then going down through the boot. So I'm not blaming it all on the boot, but it was just kind of annoying. So I did something dumb. Don't do this because I, I learned the hard way. So after that hunt, actually, I went back to my campsite, made a fire and started i put my pants my socks because i only brought one pair of boots that trip <laughs> so really really annoying i will never make that mistake again so actually there's two lessons here always pack an extra pair of boots even if your backup pair is not a great expensive pair just put another pair of shoes or something in the truck um, you will really again, you're going to thank me later because if you get them wet or something happens to have a backup pair is just huge. So that's the first piece of advice. The second thing I mentioned, I was making a fire and I put everything over the fire, including my boots and they shrunk. So my bad, the elk trackers are very tight on me now. Um, so pretty annoying. I still wear, or I still have wore them, uh, since, but just kind of annoying that I shrunk them. So bad move on me. Um, I, like I said, I'm a 14. I got these in a 14. Um, overall impressions. I, I like them. Um, I do get a weird, like kind of hot spot on my inside of my, each of my big toes. So each of my big toes on the inside, I get this weird little hot spot when I wear them for a long time. Um, on that sharp tail hunt, could have been because they were wet, but I they, they were it was pretty miserable, um, mostly because it's wet. So these are the elk trackers. They, they come in this, this like camo pattern. Um, they look pretty cool. They look a little bit like military-ish, like you would wear if you were in the military. Um, so pretty cool look to them. Um, they're a, a, I guess a mid, a mid height boot. And so definitely, definitely a lot shorter than those wing shooters. So offer good support if you are, you know, chasing sharp tail or even some mountain birds, mountain grouse or anything like that. I think these would do just fine. Um, really good traction. I, I enjoy uh, the traction on the bottom of the, uh, the sole. Um, have held up really well. I'm actually inspecting this one as I'm talking and it's just, I mean, all the seams are there. 
Um, it's it's just it, it's held up really well. Only one pair of laces. So this is the original pair of laces on here. Um, I can cinch it down really tight. Um, again, probably biggest gripe is that that kind of rubbing I get on the inside of my big toe. Um, and actually, as I'm talking, I will talk about socks here, kind of at the very end. Um, I have tried some different socks, some merino, some traditional cotton, things like that. So I have tried to switch it up a little bit. Um, so I'll get in that to the very end. Um, but these also, these elk trackers are Primaloft 400 grams. So definitely have some insulation. I have gotten pretty cold in these. Um, I think I wore these to like in a goose pit uh, waterfowl hunt one time. Um, and I was freezing. So that was not a smart decision as well. Okay, we're gonna move on to another mid-height boot. This is the Crispy Nevada. This has a Gore-Tex on it. And, oh, these things are dirty. I think I actually stepped in dog crap in these not too long ago. Um, I'm gonna move my mic. Okay, Crispy Nevadas. Uh, what do I say about these? They are the most comfortable thing I have put on my foot. I'm not going to lie. Um, I got some cheatgrass in them, actually. Picking cheatgrass out from last time I was wearing these. Um, cheatgrass is very dangerous, by the way, for your dogs. If it dries out and they inhale it or it gets under their skin. Anyways, um, I'm not going to lie. And I, again, I'm also going to remind you this is not sponsored by Crispy. But the, again, just the most comfortable thing. They have this something called A. ABSS, it's like this form, th very thin, kind of like memory foam uh, on the inside of the boot, kind of uh, up high where the ankle is. And man, it just, it hugs your ankle. And when you cinch this boot down, it really just kind of locks really well around your ankle, feels nice. Um, I really, really enjoy the lacing system on this boot. Um, has, I, I don't know what you call these things, the things where you loop the lace around those little hooks has three of those on each side. And again, they're, they're just placed really nice. Um, I can I can lock this thing down very precise um, to the kind of the level and comfort I want it each and every time. So I really, really enjoy that. Um, waterproof, like all get out, uh, really like uh, the, the waterproof features on here. Um, so I actually originally, so I'm getting dirt all over my computer. I originally picked these up for elk hunting. Um, I had a Colorado, uh, elk hunt last November, and I uh, picked these up for that. Uh, I knew I was going to need a better boot than those elk trackers. I, I just did not enjoy those for miles and miles that we're, we were going to be putting on. So picked these up for that, and I kind of thought, well, what the heck? I mean, I might as well just wear these for upland hunting too. So I wore these all last season for upland hunting, and golly jeepers, they are fantastic. Maybe one gripe about them would be they're very stiff. Uh, the sole is, is very stiff. Uh, I think Crispy's website, it rates them a, a, a stiffness level. I think it's a four out of five. Um, you can check their website for, for all the details on these. But So it's a pretty stiff boot. If you're used to a more flexible, uh, softer boot, then these might not be for you. Um, but I like that, actually. It gives me a lot of stability, a lot of confidence. Um, when, I'm, when I'm walking around, you know, hilly country, a little, maybe a little bit rocky, uneven ground. So um, I am really excited to keep wearing these Krispies. They, they, I mean, I've put definitely some miles on these, but they, they look, they're in great shape still. Um, I, I also got the uh, uninsulated. With as much walking I'm going to be doing in the uplands, I just figured I don't want my, my foot sweating. Um, I actually ordered both the insulated and non-insulated, warm around a little bit, and just decided to go with the non-insulated boot. So really, really happy with my choice. Again, it is on the stiffer side, so that might not be for you. Um, I pair these with, I think it's the darn tough socks yeah i have a couple pair of the very pretty thin lightweight uh darn tough socks and those things are fantastic a little bit pricey for socks that's that's for sure um but i just i dedicate i think i have two or three pairs of those i keep them in my my clothing bag my uh, in my in my deck system and they just live there and so i always i have one I, I wear i have a backup in my truck at all times and they're just really really comfortable um, i haven't gotten any uh any sore spots um, and i think that's a combination of the crispies and the and the socks that i'm wearing so good combination make sure you're, again you're again even just get one pair of nice socks i think it can make a big difference just in comfort letting your feet breathe and not getting any of those uh sore spots or rubbing spots so 
Um, I won't spend too much more time on these crispies. I, I just really, really enjoy them. Um, they look nice. Um, they have th this big black um, ring around the bottom. So the sole's all black. And then in the midsole, it's this black ring as well. Um, so some people might not love the look of that. I, I enjoy it. Um, I think it looks good, <laughs> looks good with upland pants and all that. So um, just really, really comfortable. I wear these out training now. I want to go you know, work my dogs. And so just my go-to boot, I really, really enjoy. All right, something a little bit different, not in that mid-height range, is a lacrosse uh, arrow form. Lacrosse arrow form. So this is a tall, this is one of those big, tall, like, not like almost to your knee high boots, um, like one of those big rubber boots. So it's like a neoprene, um, I think it's aero, I think it's aero sport actually. I think it's aero sport. My bad. Aero foam is like the, the foam at the, the, the foam technology that they use. Um, I think Mark Kenyon talks about these. Oh, arrowhead sport 16 Brown seven millimeter. Did you hear me? Arrowhead sport 16 inch Brown seven millimeter that is what these are actually made by lacrosse um, i got these for a couple different reasons one because <laughs> those ll beans that i talked about in the beginning were, um i just wanted something uh, i don't know just a little taller for shoveling snow we get some crazy storms around here and i want something a little taller um also versatile if i want to do any deer hunting uh, white tail things like that i can wear these they're good with uh you know keeping scent down all that they're not leather um, and they're really freaking comfortable, easy to put on. Um, I think they look pretty badass. I actually or ordered three different styles of these lacrosse. Um, tried them again, tried them out. That's kind of a theme. If you listen to my dog collar video or, uh, podcast, you probably heard me. I ordered like all these different dog collars and tried them out when I, when I got my bird dog, just to see what I liked, what I didn't like and all that. So you learn a lot when you can get your hands on, on something, um, versus, just forming an opinion without having knowledge or hands-on experience with something. So do your research, try things out if you can. Um, and these boots, just to let you know, they do, I think run a little bit small. So these are actually a size 13 I wear. Um, again, I'm normally a 14, so these are a 13, fit me really well. Um, I did read that they, they ran a little bit big. So um, again, a little bit different. I, I mean, in the uplands, I, I've wore these out training my dogs. Um, I've wore these, uh, you know, when it's wet out, when it's cold out, just really comfortable. Um, I do look kind of goofy. There's a, a picture of me a couple months back and I tuck my pants actually in, <laughs> in the boot. Um, so maybe not the best look. My wife makes fun of me for sure, but, um, just, <laughs> it's just kind of, uh, I don't know. I think it's fine. It's not really about how you look, but you want to look good. Anyways, uh, fun, really fun boot. Again, if it's wet, snowy, really muddy, I'm going to wear these. I wore these the whole time when we snow goose hunted in Nebraska last year. Worked out fantastic. My feet stay dry, really warm. Uh, you know, for doing any kind of waterfowl, you're not moving a lot. And these just, I really enjoyed them. They kept me really warm. That was kind of my biggest concern. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a quick uh, review of some boots guys. Um, again, I, I did talk about the socks. I'm wearing those darn tough socks. Um, you can find them online on Amazon. I'm pretty sure. Um, Nick Larson, if you're listening, yes, there is an Amazon app for your phone. <laughs> I'm just going to say, man, hopefully you got that downloaded. Um, anyways, so guys, if you're in the market for some boots, hit me up. If you have questions on any of these boots, um, again, I went through, uh, the crispy Nevada, uh, the Irish setter elk tracker and the Irish setter wing shooter, the tall one. Um, the, both the Irish setters I own are the insulated ones very both very warm i think and the crispy nevada is uninsulated but uh, and i'm really glad i did not go insulated for that boot so if i had to pick an overall winner it's going to be the crispy nevada i know surprise surprise um so here's the deal if there is a boot you are rocking that is noteworthy that you would just like to highlight shoot me a message uh, message me on Instagram um, at Upland Brits or at the Upland Rookie Podcast. Let me know what you're rocking. Um, I did a poll um, a few weeks back on this and uh, it was kind of all over the board, but I'd love to hear a little bit more detail on, hey, wh what are you rocking and why are you rocking it? Um, again, I get I get people a lot that will message me and say, Hey, like, what about this piece of gear? What do you think about this? And so, um, again, if I don't have experience with it, I'm not going to give you 
my two cents on it because I just, I really believe that um, I want to form my own opinion. I don't want to have my opinion mimic what Joe down the street, his experience was. I actually want to touch it, feel it, see it, experience it for myself. And and then I can give an honest, um, honest review or or feedback on um, those products. So anyways, guys, hit me up. I hope you enjoyed this. This um, is actually coming out um, I'll probably release this tonight, actually. Um, kind of a maybe a little bit of a bonus episode. Um, again, I really hope you guys enjoy this. Please rate and review the podcast. Um, I have loved, I really, really have loved and appreciated all the written reviews you guys have left on Apple Podcast. Um, cannot thank you enough. Um, I was reading a couple of them the other night with my wife, and it's just it's been really fun um, just to see the and hear the encouragement you guys have been leaving. Uh, I'm glad this is helping you, and I'm really glad this this podcast is reaching hunters who have just started in the last six months, but also it's reaching reaching hunters that have have been doing this for 20 years or more. Um, that's really encouraging to me. I didn't want to pigeonhole this podcast into something that was just for a small um, niche group. Um, so I'm really, really stoked that this is hitting a wider, wider range of people. Um, and I just really appreciate your support. Um, you guys have been writing me messages constantly, just, um, just saying that you enjoy it. And, and that really, <laughs> really means a lot. Um, so anyways, thank you so so much, guys. Share the podcast with a friend. Uh, rate and review. Hey, don't forget about the Dakota 283 uh, podcast giveaway. Um, the, you're getting a, a G3 medium kennel with the Dakota Guard, as well as a Dine and Dash or a Dash watering system with Dakota Guard as well. Um, get entered into the podcast. Get your story submitted. Um, again, that is if you want bonus entries, so your name can go in the hat uh, another five times if you submit a written story or if you post a, a video story online. Um, just sharing your uh, your experience getting into uh, upland hunting and bird dogs. So guys, uh, that's it for this uh, kind of bonus episode. I hope you enjoy and I will talk to you on the next episode. Thanks so much. Oh, and if you actually just go put some miles on your boots and follow your favorite bird dog. Have fun.